Hey there, students. Um, welcome to part one of the KC number, number sense um, series. Uh, so we're going to be going over questions one to ten um, on the release KC questions. It can be found on the cde.ca.gov website. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number one. Number one says the radius of the Earth's orbit is 150 billion meters. What is this number in scientific notation? Now, I have a, a tutorial on um, scientific notation that you can watch down here um, to go over more practice. So let's let's uh, go over this problem. We have 150 billion. We want to write this in scientific notation. Now, scientific notation requires there to be only one number in uh, to the left of the decimal point. Okay, so you need only one number to the left of the decimal point. One number to the left of the decimal point. Okay, decimal point. All right, where is the decimal point in this problem? Well, it's back here. Okay, way too many numbers in front. 12 to be specific. We need only one number in to the left of the decimal point, okay? So in order to work on scientific notation, there's a, a thing you need to get uh, familiar with, the whole, orient a whole idea of orientation. If this is the number, this is the front, okay? Why is it the front? Because this is the biggest number, and then this is the back, okay? Because that's the smallest number. Now, um, this is the deal here. If you're going backwards, if you're heading to the back of the number, you're, you, you're going to acquire a negative sign, okay? So going back is a minus, and going to the front is a plus, okay? Any decimal point backwards, any decimal point you move backwards, you're going to be multiplying by 10 to the negative 1, because this is the same thing as dividing by 10, all right? Anytime you divide by 10, guess what? The decimal point moves to the back one place. All right. Now, any decimal point you move to the uh, to the front of the number, to the left, you're going to be multiplying by 10 to the one, or you're just basically multiplying by 10. Anytime you multiply a number by 10, guess what? The decimal point um, gets moved gets moved to the front. Okay. I, I mean, whenever you move whenever I move a decimal point to the front, what you're doing is you're multiplying. 10. You're going to have to add 10 to the 1 to that number, okay, to compensate for that move, all right? So keep that in mind. All right, so um, in this problem, we want to write this number in scientific notation. So we're going to be moving the decimal point here. Um, now let's look at the options we have. Can we eliminate options here? Of course, this number has two digits to the left. Remember, we need only one, one digit. I suppose to put digit, not number. One digit, we need only one digit to the left. This has two digits too much. This has three digits. One, two, three. Three digits to the left of the decimal. That's too much. These are my two candidates here, all right? So let's figure this out. Now, since we're going to be moving to the front, we, is, as though we're multiplying by 10, we're going to be adding plus 10. Every time we move to the front, we have to add a multiply by 10, put a 10 to the 1, okay? So we're going forward, starting from here. This is our target right here. So how many times do we have to move to get to our target? So we're going to go to the front of the, towards the front. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11. Okay, so I'm changing this number to 1.5, but I can't just change the number to 1.5, right? Since I've been moving the decimal point, every move I have been adding times 10 to the what? Positive 1. For every single move is 10 to the positive 1. How many times did I move? I moved 11 times. Okay, since I moved 11 times, it's going to be positive 11. So what I, uh, what I did here is I multiplied by 10 to the positive 11 since I was heading to the front of the number, okay? If I were going to the back of the number, it's as well I divide, I have to be adding 10 to the negative 11, okay? So the answer in this case is 1.5 times 10 to the positive 11, okay? So that's, the answer is option B. So remember, anytime you're going to the front, the exponent keeps becoming positive, and if you're going to the back, 
the exponent, this times 10 component here, the exponent starts to become negative, all right? So your answer is 1.5 times 10 to the positive 11, all right? Thanks. Uh, now let's move on to question number 10 to the second power. So we had 3.6 uh, times 10 to the second power, all right? So this is the opposite of what we did before. This, since this is positive 2, it tells me that the original number I had, I had a decimal point moved forward two times to come up with 3.6. So to undo what I did, I need this 2 gone, so I'm going to do the opposite. So since plus positive 2 means that you move it forward twice, to get rid of this, I'm just going to minus 2. All right, what does minus 2 mean? It means that you're going to move your decimal point back this amount number of times. So you're going to go 1, 2 backwards. All right, if you do that, this is going to be a power of 0 and it's going to get rid of this 10 right here. So this whole 10 goes away. So if I move it back two times, I have a spot here. I'm going to fill that empty spot with a 0. So your answer is going to be 360. All right, so that's um, the... 3.6 times 10 square. Okay, so there you have it, 360. Okay, now just one thing you want to remember is when your decimal point is going back, you subtract from the exponent, and when it's going forward, you add to the exponent. Okay, all right, let's take a look at question number uh, three. It says which expression represents 0. 0.000007? Uh, so let's rewrite that down point. How many digits do we have before 7? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so remember, you may have only one digit in front of the decimal. So all these are just one digit in front of the decimal. So that's good. So how, do we, how many times do we move the decimal point so we have exactly one digit in front of the decimal? So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven. I moved seven times. Did I go to the back or to the front? Remember I told you earlier, if you're going to this direction, that as you're going behind the number is a minus, and if you're going in that direction to the front of the number, you're gonna it's gonna be a plus. Okay? So this is the back of the number and this is to the front of the number. Alright? So uh, we moved back here, so this we moved back 7 times, so this is going to be a minus 7. So our answer is going to be 7 times 10 to the negative 7, since we moved back 7 places. So our answer for number 3 is going to be B. All right, let's move on to question number 4. It says the five members... Um, of a band are getting new outfits. This, oops. Um, shirts cost $12 each, pants $29 each, and boots $49 a pair. What is the total cost of the new outfits for all members? All right. So you want to be careful here. There are five members in all. So what we need to do is we want to find the cost for one member and then multiply it by five. Okay. So cost for one member. What is the cost for one member? All you just do is you just simply add everything. So 12 plus 29 plus 49. Okay, so let's do two at a time. If I add this two, I'm going to have uh, 41 plus 49 is going to be 90. All right, $90. Is that our answer? Is this our answer? That's just for one member, right? But the question asks for all. How many are there in all five? So be careful. Don't select this. That's not an answer, okay? So to get so cost for all members, cost for all members is simply going to be 90 times what? 5. What is 90 times 5? $450. So this is the total cost. Your answer is option C. Okay? All right. Let's move on to question uh, 5. It says, what is 11 over 12 minus parenthesis 1 third plus 1 fourth? So in this problem, we're going to use the order of operations. Okay? You know what your order of operations are. When you, sim when you simplify the arithmetic expressions, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So we need to resolve the parenthesis first before we do the subtraction right here. So let's focus on 
evaluating this sum and then we're gonna subtract it from this. Denominators are different, so we need to make them the same in this parenthesis. So what do I wanna make three and four into? The LCD, what is the LCD of three and four? What is the smallest number that these two can go into? The answer is 12, right? So I need to make this 12 and I need to make this 12. So the question is, what do I multiply three by to make it 12? Four, right, top and bottom. And then what do I multiply this by to make it 12? Three, top and bottom. So you don't change the number, all right? So when you multiply that, you have 11 over 12 minus four over three, I'm sorry, four over 12 plus three over 12. Okay, notice you, when you're multiplying fractions, you multiply across. So four times one is four, four times three is 12, one times three is three, four times three is 12, okay? We're still working with the parentheses, all right? So let's finish with that. Leave this 11 over 12 alone, okay? Minus, what is four? Uh, so it, since the denominators are the same, we just combine them into one. Four plus three is seven, okay? Now, we, we're now going to have 11 over 12 minus 7 over 12. So now, you, all you just simply do is uh, subtract. You subtract the um, numerator. The denominator stays the same. 11 minus 7 is... Uh, so, um, 11 minus 7 is 4. So, we can reduce this, right? 4 goes into... 4 and 12, so I, I'm going to divide by 4. So if I divide by 4, my final answer is going to be 1 over 3. So my answer is option A. So number 5 is A. All right, let's move along to number 6. It says, which of the following expressions results in a negative number? So let's start with the first one, negative 7 plus negative 3. So this one is simply going to become negative 7 plus... Um, plus times negative 3. Now what happens when you multiply a positive and a negative? If you multiply signs that are different, guess what? The sign is always going to become a minus. Since minus and plus are different, you're going to have minus 7, minus 3. All right? So let me just do a real quick chart here. Minus times minus, the signs are the same. You have a plus. Minus times a plus, since the signs are different, you have a negative. Positive times a negative, since the signs are different, you have a negative. Positive times positive, since the signs are the same, you have a positive. All right, so keep that in mind. So since these signs are different, you have a negative. Now, um, when you add in numbers, when the signs are the same, you add and keep the signs, so this will become negative 10. All right, so this one right here is a negative number, so the answer to number 6 is A. Okay, all right, let's just do the rest just for practice. This one we have minus 3 plus 7. The signs are different, so we're going to subtract 7 from 3, which is 4, 3 from 7, which is 4. You keep the sign of the bigger one. Since 7 is bigger, you keep a plus, all right? This one, they're both positives, so you just add and keep your sign. 3 plus 7 is 10. Since they're both pluses, you keep that plus, all right? And then the D option, you're going to have 3 plus times negative 7 plus 11. Positive times a negative, signs are different, so you're going to multiply them, you have a minus 7 plus 11. All right, so this one, minus and plus on PEMDAS, you do them interchangeably, but from left to right. So we're going to start from the left, 3 minus 7 is negative 4 plus 11. If I combine these two, you notice their signs are different, so I have to subtract 11 from set 4, which is 7, and keep the sign of the bigger one, which is plus. So you can see that this is positive, this is positive, and that's positive. So your answer is option A. All right, let's move on to question 7. It says 100 is multiplied by a number between 0 and 1. The answer has to be less than 0, between 0 and 50, but not 25, between 0 and 100, but not 50, between 0 and 100. So all you just simply do is you take the minimum and the maximum, and then you multiply it by whatever we're dealing with here, and then we can find the boundaries, okay? So since the minimum, we're going from uh, we're going from 0 all the way to 1. The minimum is 0, okay? So what do I do with that? I multiply it by the, by the factor, which is uh, 100. So 0 times 100. If I multiply 0 by 100, what do I get? I get 0. So 
since it has to be, so that's the minimum, okay? And then the maximum, the maximum boundary is, is 1, so I'm going to multiply that by 100. Multiply that by 100, I get the upper limit, which is 100. So since it has, it, since the number has to be between 0 and 100, if we multiply by 10, it has to be between, it has to be between 0 and 100. Okay, so the number has to be between between 0 and 100. Okay, so your answer for number 7 is option D. Okay, let's move on to question 8. It says, John uses two-thirds of a cup for serving to make, uh, to make oatmeal. How many cups of oat does he need to make six servings? All right, so um, for one serving, he just has two-thirds. Well, how about six? All you just simply do is uh, two thirds times the number of servings, right? So we're times in it by six in this case because every one you do two thirds. So for six, you're going to do two thirds times six times, all right? So you want to multiply this, put this over one, multiply across, you're going to have 12 over three, and that divides out into four. Answer to number eight is B, okay? All right. Moving along to question 9, it says, what is the value of 1 8 square? So what does that mean, 1 8 square? Well, there are two ways of doing it. Square basically means you're multiplying something by itself, so it's basically 1 over 8 times 1 over 8, right? So you multiply these fractions across, so you're going to have 1 over 64. Another way to do this is by distributing this power to everything on the inside. So you can distribute the square to the 1 and distribute the square to the 8. So this becomes 1 square over 8 square. 1 square is 1, 8 square is 64. So there goes your final answer. All right? So the answer to number 9 is A. Number 10, it says Freya makes 4 of her 5 free throws in a basketball game. What is her free throw shooting percentage? So four out of five four out of five how do you express this as percent if you want to make it percent percent means you're multiplying it by 100 okay so that's what how you convert to percentage all right so four over five times 100 if i multiply across i'll have 400 divided by five percent what is 400 divided by five i have absolutely no idea so let's go ahead and divide it out 400 Divided by 5, 5 goes into 40 8 times. 8 times 5 is 40. We have no other numbers, so we just move the 0 up over here. So it's going to be 80%. So four over 400 over 5 is 80%. So the answer to number 10 is C. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> Now, thanks so much for paying attention to this uh, presentation. Please subscribe to my videos so you can get future updates to the subsequent parts of this video series. Feel free to request videos on any math concepts you have difficulty with. Uh, if you like this video, you can click like down here. Uh, collection of clips can be found on mathgoodserve.com. Thanks again.